yeah now the next is write down state variables what are state variables all these terms we will understand today okay there are so many terms we need to understand processes we need to understand because we'll be using these terms very frequently in this chapter we haven't done this kind of thing chapters before because we were doing atoms you know gas pressure volume right p is equals to nrt density electrons protons that is what we were discussing right but this is different okay we are having a different different terms that we will be using so first of all you should be familiar or comfortable with all these terms then only you will be able to understand the concept okay acha state variable is not that state variable is something else you are talking about a state function tithiksha that that is what i am talking about okay terms you understand properly the one that you are talking about depend upon state not on path that is state function isn't it i am talking about state variables state variables means what suppose the position of an object how do we define the position of an object what i'll do i'll take the help of cartesian system right cartesian coordinate so i can say this point a is uh, you know 3 unit on x axis and 2 unit on y axis 3 2 so the coordinate of this point is what 3 comma 2 yes or no so this is the variable we are using to you know explain the position of point a there yeah that's right that's right gayatri okay so what are variables we are using to explain the or to define the position of an object which is mostly gases over here correct so in gaseous state also we have discussed it that the variables are pressure volume and temperature mainly okay a fixed position will have a fixed pressure fixed volume fixed temperature correct that will change only when the position will change right at this point you see we have a fixed value of pressure here right a fixed value of pressure volume and temperature if you change the position somewhere here then here we'll have some different value of pressure volume and temperature so variables are what variables are the terms which defines the position of an object right so mainly for objects like heavier object and other thing we use cartesian system here for gases we use pressure volume and temperature understood right so this we call it as state variables heading sorry uh, write down the definition quickly all of you definition write down variables which defines the state of a system is called state variable variable which defines the state of a system is called state variable example we have mainly three state variables we have that is pressure volume and temperature three state variables we have okay next line write, write down when all the variables when all the variables state variables when all the variables are fixed not changing it is fixed right then we say that system is at particular particular state okay when all the variables are fixed then we say then we say the system is at a particular state particular state okay so you have a state over here this state will have certain pressure certain volume certain temperature and this will have certain volume certain uh, pressure certain temperature so suppose this is a state a this is a state b so here we define pressure suppose p a v a and t a okay and then here it is p b v b and t b now how do we get this how do we have this change in state okay so the we can have various various possibilities right so we can go from a to b by infinite number of paths basically we say there are infinite number of paths but uh, practically it is not there we have to study four five uh, paths over here 
So point I'm trying to make that you can go from point A to point B. There are many different ways, right? You can go like this, you can go like this. There are many different way we can have from A to B if you want to go. All these different paths that we have, we call it as process. Understood? Process. You must have done isothermal process, isobaric process, isochoric process, reversible process, irreversible process, many things, correct? So the, the path by which change in state variable is there, right? One or more than one, that is not the problem, right? If only one state variable is changing, then also we say a system is under process, okay? If more than one state variable is changing, then also we say the system is under process, okay? So all these paths by which change in state variables is there is possible, we call it as processes, right? What are different, different processes? We have a few examples I have given you, right? That is you know, uh, isothermal, isobaric, isochoric, adiabatic, many other things, right? So all these state variables we will see, oh, sorry, process we'll see later on, but that is how the change in state possible by different, different paths, which we call it as, uh, you know, which we call it as um, processes, correct? So state variable is this, next. Right on next, thermodynamic properties. Thermodynamic properties. See, mainly we have two types of properties. The first one is extensive properties. And the second one is intensive property. Okay. First you write down extensive property. These are the properties These are the properties which depends upon which depends upon mass or the amount that you are taking, right? Amount or mass that you are taking, okay? Extensive properties are additive in nature. We can add to extensive property. Example, I'll tell you, with example, you will understand, uh, additive in nature. Additive in nature. Okay, so example, if you see of extensive property, examples we have, mass. Mass is an extensive property, isn't it? Okay, you have an object of two kg mass, for example, suppose this is the object of two kg mass we have. And if you place a block on this of one kg, what do you say, what is the total mass here in this direction? What is the weight component here? You'll say mg and m is what? m is two plus one three? Yes or no? This kind of question you must have done in physics, no? So this is why we are adding the two mass here, right? One plus two, because mass is an extensive property. We can directly add the two, okay? So other examples, examples you must remember in NEET exam, in uh, you know, others exams also, they've asked the, this question many times that which of this is an example of extensive property, okay? So first ex uh, definitions, the mass I have given, the example I have given, that is mass. Then we have moles, then we have volume, then we have, uh, you know, energy, energy U, internal energy. What is H stands for? Tell me, what is H stands for? Enthalpy, what is G stands for? Gives free energy. What is S stands for? 
एंड्रॉपी एस स्टैंड फॉर एंड्रॉपी करेक्ट तो ऑल दीज टर्म्स आर एक्सटेंसिव प्रॉपर्टी राइट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस रेजिस्टेंस इज एन एक्सटेंसिव प्रॉपर्टी ओके हीट कैपेसिटी हीट कैपेसिटी इज ऑल्सो एन एक्सटेंसिव प्रॉपर्टी examples you must remember i'll i'll tell you few tricks by which you can memorize you can understand the examples but yes uh, you have to memorize this important this one whatever we have done so far this portion is the most important one okay what is density 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 is intensive right that's why density is non additive you mix oil and water yes you mix oil and water so you cannot say the density of the mixture would be density of oil plus density of water that you cannot say correct and one more thing you can understand if you take water so if you take one spoon of water or one bucket of water the density of water won't change right right that's why density is an intensive property that intensive property is what is the one which is the is independent of the amount or the mass of the substance so the second property thermodynamic property you write down that is intensive property intensive property we have many examples right on these are the properties which is independent of which is independent of mass independent of mass and non additive in nature it is non additive non additive okay examples examples of intensive property we have pressure intensive then we have uh, temperature pressure temperature density intensive all concentration term any concentration term you pick all concentration term are intensive molarity molality concentration term are intensive okay mole fraction also a concentration term intensive correct boiling point boiling point intensive melting point intensive boiling point melting point intensive no molarity won't depend upon mass it won't change you take 2 liter of coke ka bottle correct and you pour this into a glass right so the glass one and the bottle one the test will be same it won't change because molarity is same concentration is same right boiling point melting point we have uh, conductivity we have conductivity resistivity
कंडक्टिविटी रेसिस्टिविटी ओके मोलर वॉल्यूम सी वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट आई एम टेलिंग यू हियर वॉल्यूम इज वॉट इंटेंसिव और एक्सटेंसिव वॉल्यूम इज इंटेंसिव और एक्सटेंसिव यस सो वॉल्यूम इज एक्सटेंसिव बट मोलर वॉल्यूम इज इंटेंसिव बिकॉज मोलर वॉल्यूम इज वॉल्यूम ऑफ वन मोल राइट मोलर वॉल्यूम इज द वॉल्यूम ऑफ वन मोल hence it is intensive so whenever you see this term molar term or specific okay molar term or specific these two terms if it is mentioned there it means the entire term is intensive in nature molar means for one mole specific means for one gram are you getting it yes tell me whenever you see molar volume molar enthalpy enthalpy is what enthalpy is extensive so if i write down molar enthalpy it becomes intensive so molar term is mentioned it is for one mole it is enthalpy it is intensive molar enthalpy is intensive okay molar entropy is intensive because molar term is written over there molar entropy is intensive okay heat capacity is extensive correct heat capacity is extensive but molar heat capacity is intensive yes yes molarity is also intensive yeah molar heat capacity is intensive right A specific heat capacity again specific heat capacity intensive so whenever you see molar or specific word written it means it is an intensive property without any thought you can go with this okay refractive index refractive index intensive okay viscosity viscosity intensive surface tension intensive dielectric constant dielectric constant intensive ph value intensive emf of the cell of cell intensive copy this down what is solubility intensive or extensive solubility is intensive okay because the definition of solubility if you see it is the ability of a compound to get dissolved in any solvent at a given temperature so it is temperature dependent process usually we you don't define this in intensive or extensive but if you ask we'll take a particular temperature and at that temperature no matter what amount of solute you have you have put in a fixed amount will get dissolved okay so it is an intensive property acha okay ठीक है 
Can we move on? Ha. One more very important relation you try to understand in this. Uh, density we all know. Intensive or extensive? We have seen density is intensive. Correct. One second. Okay, so density is equals to mass by volume, mass by volume. If you look at this, density is an intensive property. Intensive property, mass is extensive property. Volume is also extensive property. So from this definition, you can easily define that when the ratio, if you take the ratio of two extensive property, it becomes intensive in nature. So note down this point. The ratio of of two extensive property extensive property becomes intensive becomes intensive okay another example you see uh, we have uh, mole fraction mole fraction mole fraction what we can write given number of moles by total moles so moles are extensive only so extensive ex extensive this becomes intensive right so this formula this you know observation you must keep in mind if you get confused in the exam you can think of this way also formula just you try to recall from that also you will you will understand Clear, no doubt. Okay, one more question. Delta T is intensive or extensive? Change in any variable, intensive or extensive? Yes, intensive. Change is always intensive. It has nothing to do with the temperature that you have taken. Change if you find out, so it is always intensive in nature. Clear?
yeah next write down that is thermodynamic functions okay um okay write down next delta t is intensive that's what i said no next write down thermodynamic functions thermodynamic function we have of two types we have of two types first one is state function and the second one is path function state function is the one which is independent of path independent of path for example we have pressure volume temperature enthalpy internal energy entropy gives free energy etc okay path function path function is it depends upon path it depends upon path for example we have heat and work suppose you are at this position a okay you are suppose at position a and if you want to go to position b there are infinite number of path possible one is this you can go directly from a to b one possibility is this another possibility is you can roam around and then you can come to this point b okay another possibility is and go to some other point and this and then this you can go means the point i'm trying to make there are infinite number of paths possible here if you want to go to uh, you know uh, you want to go to chennai suppose from bangalore you can go to chennai directly or you can also go to hyderabad and then chennai depends upon the wish right but the thing is if you choose the longer path you have to do more amount of work right more amount of fuel you have to use right that's why the work done and heat required energy required it depends upon the path that you choose correct but if you talk about the pressure at point a if it is pa and pressure at b is pb or for instance if i say volume is va vb ta tb is the temperature no like it doesn't matter what path you choose right the pressure at b is always pb it won't change it does not depend upon the part that you are choosing correct that's why these variables depends only upon the state of the you know of the system at what state at what position the system is based on that only we have the value of pa pb sorry pressure volume temperature enthalpy and all but heat and work it depends upon what path you are choosing hence these two are path function this is the state function we have
Clear. थर्मोडायनेमिक इक्विलिब्रियम सी इन थर्मोडायनेमिक्स वी डील्स विथ द सिस्टम विच आर इन थर्मोडायनेमिक इक्विलिब्रियम ऑलवेज वेदर इट इज मैं नॉट वी ऑलवेज कंसिडर द सिस्टम विच आर इन थर्मोडायनेमिक इक्विलिब्रियम ओके यू वॉन्ट गेट एनी न्यूमेरिकल ऑन दिस बट यू शुड have the understanding of this particular term that what is thermodynamic equilibrium correct thermodynamic equilibrium is defined when a system is in when a system is at when a system is at thermal chemical and mechanical equilibrium all three kind of equilibrium thermal chemical and mechanical equilibrium then it is said to be in then it is said to be in thermodynamic equilibrium all three equilibriums are there then thermodynamic equilibrium we'll have a chapter of equilibrium also chemical equilibrium and ionic equilibrium which we'll discuss after this chapter okay there you will have the understanding of what does this equilibrium means okay briefly i'll just give you the meaning of this what is thermal equilibrium what is chemical equilibrium and all right thermal equilibrium is the one in which the two object or two system is at the same temperature like for example if i have this object at 100 degree celsius and i have the another object which is at 10 degree celsius for instance i'm saying if you connect these two or if you keep these two in contact then what happens from 100 degree celsius the heat starts flowing into 10 degree celsius because of the difference in temperature so after some time what happens both system will be at the same temperature right and when the temperature is same there is no more heat transfer because the two object or system is now is at thermal equilibrium so thermal equilibrium is what it is based upon the temperature two system is at the same temperature they are said to be in thermal equilibrium clear so thermal equilibrium is based upon based on temperature constant temperature we have in the two object two system chemical equilibrium when we have concentra constant concentration if concentration is not changing constant concentration concentration changes but the rate of change is same okay so overall you know the concentration is constant only last one is mechanical equilibrium what is mechanical equilibrium right when we have equal pressure equal pressure mechanical equilibrium you can understand you have an object like this and suppose you are trying to pull the object with some force 
10 newton and same amount of force you are applying in the opposite direction 10 newton then we have equal force in the two direction equal pressure we have right then this object is said to be in mechanical equilibrium so when these two these three equilibrium exist then the system is said to be in thermodynamic equilibrium and in thermodynamics which deals with thermodynamic equilibrium only clear no doubt okay next next we have thermodynamic processes definition you write down it is an what is a process so it is an operation by which it is an operation by which a system is changing its state is changing its state it denotes the path it denotes the path followed followed by the system denotes the path followed by the system while changing the state okay if you talk about change over here change we can also have three types change if you see we have three types we have here the first one we can say physical change or phase change physical change or phase change means what solid to liquid conversion phase change we have and then we have chemical change and then we have a uh, state change state change means variable is changing pressure volume temperature right state change means state variable it's not the physical state it's a state variable so we have this uh, physical change means solid to liquid conversion liquid to gas gas to solid this conversion we have here this is the change one chemical change is mainly deals with the reaction so reactant to product the change we have reactant to product and state variable changes means the change in pressure volume temperature so mainly we have this one the third one is the important one we have here copy this down first
Okay. So different processes that we have here. You see, the first process is isothermal process. Isothermal process. Second one is isobaric process. Third one is isochoric process. Isochoric process. All these things we have discussed. Then the fourth one is adiabatic process. adiabatic process fifth one is cyclic process and apart from this these five we have two more processes that is reversible and irreversible we'll discuss that after this What is isothermal process? We have constant temperature. Isobaric bar is the unit of pressure. Iso means equal. So we have constant pressure. And the third one isochoric is constant volume. Adiabatic process, I have told you, there's no change exchange of heat. So delta Q is zero for adiabatic process. Cyclic process, initial and final state is same. Initial and final state is same. Okay, for example, you see, This is pressure, this is volume, this is pressure, this is volume, okay? Now the process, suppose it starts with the point A, goes to B, then B2, C, C2, D, and D2, A. So it's a cyclic process. Initial and final state is same, okay? This is also a cyclic process, obviously you see, it is a cyclic process. Right? So cyclic process is the one in which initial and final state is same. Since initial and final state is same over here, so all those variables which are, which are state variables, change in all those variables, state variables are zero. Because delta P, if you write, it is PF minus PI. Right? It is final pressure minus initial pressure. But since the final and initial position is same only here, so PF and PI is also equal. And that's why delta P is zero. Similarly, delta V is zero. Delta H is zero. Delta U is zero. Delta T is zero. Right? Delta G is zero. All these change in state variables are zero in cyclic process.
yes sitiksha any doubt okay copy this out yeah finish all of you done okay suppose if uh, pressure volume graph is given then how do you find out the work done just i'm asking tell me you know this have you done this in school no right okay pressure volume graph if it is given then directly you can find out the area under the curve that would be the work done okay directly suppose if i ask you what is the work done in this process a to b b to c c to d d to f then what you will say you will find out the area of this yeah p delta v you will find out the area of this rectangle and you say sir this is the work done so that's fine okay but this we can do we can find out area only if pv graph is given if pv graph is not given you cannot find out this because work done is p delta v so pressure volume graph you must require so sometimes what happens in the question in instead of pv they will give you pt graph or vt graph so you should know how to convert a pt graph into pv graph or vt graph into pt graph means this conversion you should know how to convert one graph into another graph so let's discuss one uh, you know example on this conversion of graph graph conversion heading right down how we will discuss we will discuss after this this we haven't finished reversible irreversible after this we will discuss okay let let us finish this first right so the process that we have discussed no based on that only we have this so we'll finish it out first so suppose here okay so this axis is uh, given it is pt pressure and temperature graph we have this is p this is v this is pv this is vp so this graph is actually given here passes through origin constant temperature this is the graph we have here okay and it is given here the process is going from a to b a to b then we have b to c and c to a this is a graph given you need to convert this into the pressure volume graph okay now how do we do this you see could you tell me the process ab what is this process ab 
what is the name of the process a b b c and c a what is the name of the process but we didn't we don't talk about heating over here ab you see it is pt graph no compare this with pv is equals to nrt guys you see compare this with pv is equals to nrt correct so we have graph of p and t here you see graph of p and t passing through origin so it is constant volume we have here correct constant volume so ab is isochoric can we say that ab is isochoric similarly bc is constant temperature so bc is isothermal and ca is constant pressure so it is isobaric clear no doubt isochoric isochoric but what is happening here you see pressure is increasing pressure is increasing this you must remember okay this is given pressure is increasing b2c we have isothermal but pressure is decreasing right and c2a we have isobaric temperature is decreasing isn't it so further if we extend this pressure is increasing volume is constant so temperature will also increase temperature will also increase here similarly here pressure is decreasing process is isothermal so volume will increase volume should increase in this process and temperature is decreasing pressure is constant so volume should decrease in this process can we say that is it clear till here no doubt please respond all of you clr you can type in okay so this is one thing now we know this pv graph at constant temperature it goes like this it is rectangular hyperbola and we have done this in gaseous state also the graph goes like this isn't it any doubt in this this is the pv graph we have right constant temperature it is it is a isothermal graph yes constant temperature so bc process is this but now the question is question is where we should take the point b this is point b or this is point b could you answer this which one is the point b top one or the bottom one right you need to hit and trial hit and trial you need to apply here so suppose i am taking this point as b right this point as c then what happens you see b to c the process is expansion or compression b to c the process is expansion or compression expansion expansion means volume increases that is what the thing over here volume increases it means our assumption is correct if you take it other way just for this one i am just trying to make you understand suppose i am taking b over here and c over here so b to c is the case of compression so volume should decrease but here the volume is increasing it means this our assumption is wrong hence the order should be this b should be here right b should be here c is here and this is the case of expansion no doubt yes tell me all of you clear right now the question is where we should take a either we should take a this side or this side that's the question so again you should you can give it a try you can assume it this side and compare the other relation okay so for example suppose i'm assuming a somewhere here 
तो वट विल हैपन ए टू बी इज दिस एंड सी टू एज दिस दिस इज द ग्राफ वी हैव सो ए टू बी वॉट इज है वॉल्यूम इज डिक्रीजिंग करेक्ट कॉन्स्टेंट प्रेशर ए टू बी वॉल्यूम इज डिक्रीजिंग ए टू बी राइट Here you see A to B is constant volume process, but volume is not constant here. It means this assumption is wrong. Are you getting my point? If you take A this side, right? So A to B should be isochronic constant volume process, right? Which is not coming out to be over here. It is volume is changing over here. That's why this our assumption is again wrong, and hence we will take A. somewhere here here we'll take it now what happens a to b is this right a to c is this correct so a to b the process the graph goes like this a to b b to c and c to a now you can cross check all the data a to b is isochronic you see a to b is isochronic constant volume and pressure is increasing correct pressure is increasing so constant volume pressure increases so temperature will also increase that is what the point we have here c to a we have isobaric constant pressure volume decreases right so c to a isobaric volume decreases so this graph is correct did you understand this because constant volume we have no why linear because pv is equals to nrt one degree equation it is Tell me any doubt? Prakul understood why it is linear? Yeah. All of you understood? Type in please. yeah could you draw vt graph from this similarly you need to do try this vt graph you try once Done. Okay. So, VT graph. The line which passes through origin, that represents constant temperature line. Sorry, pressure line. Isobaric process it is it is right. Isobaric process is C to A. So on this line we have two points A and C. so where we to we should place this a and c should we place c over here and a over here or other way c above a down okay so we'll write c above a down okay 
so i am placing this a over here and c here how do you understand this you have to take a guess on it okay you have to take a guess just a hunch you can say and then you need to you know cross check the other things which is coming out to be in line or not okay if it is like fine if it is coming out to be the other conditions is fine according to your assumption it means your assumption is correct otherwise you have to take the other assumption okay that is how we'll do this suppose i am taking c over here a over here so c to a c to a is what c to a is isobaric process yes it is isobaric process passing through origin and the line is this c to a you see volume is decreasing right volume is decreasing so temperature will also decrease so that's what the point we have here c to a volume decreases if you take it other way then it is a case of expansion volume increases wrong okay now should we take b this side on on the top or on the bottom this side to this side that is what the question suppose if you take b over here then a to b is the case of expansion right so volume decreases volume decreases you see a to b is a case of expansion volume increases but temperature is constant but a to b is constant volume process no a to b is isochronic so if you consider b over here volume won't be constant right that's why this b we need to take over here b will be somewhere here and c and b will continue okay so this is the graph we have over here this is b so a to b is this b to c is this and c to a is this now we'll cross check all the data a to b you see constant volume temperature increases a to b constant volume isochronic temperature increases b to c constant temperature volume increases b to c isothermal constant temperature volume increases so this is the correct vt graph we have from pv we have drawn or pt we have drawn so if vt is given you can convert into pv if pt is given you can convert into pv like this and then you can find out the work done in this process any doubt in this yeah we'll do one more just a second okay one more example on this you see okay the first graph is vt and this vt graph you need to convert into pv and pt the graph that is given is this
this is the graph we have a point is this we have a to b b to c and then c to a try this one then yeah A to B is isothermal, correct. B to C is isobaric. Uh, isobaric, correct. C to A is isochoric. Yeah, that's right. Kirtana, that's right. Okay. So if you draw the graph here, I'll just tell you like the process which is isothermal. Isothermal process is uh, A to B. Right. Isothermal process is A to B and that to compression, right? Volume is decreasing. AB is isothermal process. So volume decreases. Volume decreases here. Volume is decreasing. That means pressure increases. That's one thing. Second is B to C. BC is isobaric. Isobaric and volume increases, correct? Volume is increasing. Right, volume is increasing, pressure is constant, temperature is also increasing. CA is isochoric, isochoric, temperature is decreasing, and temperature decreasing, volume constant, pressure is also decreasing here. decreases. This is the information we have with the given graph. Correct? Now A to B is uh, isothermal. So this graph will go like this. PV graph if you draw. So A to B the graph will be like this. Okay. But since it is pressure is increasing. So we must have A over here and B somewhere here so that the pressure increases like this. Okay, B to C is isochoric. So isochoric uh, B to C is isobaric. So if you take C over here, so pressure won't be constant over here. 
So I'll take C somewhere here. I'll take C somewhere here and these two point I'll join, right? So we have uh, C over here. So B, C, B to C is isobaric, you see, pressure constant. And C to A is isochoric volume constant. Pressure decreases, pressure decreases, volume increases, temperature increases. This is the graph we have, PV. Understood? And the PT graph, if I draw here, it goes like this. Same logic you can apply, you will get this. A is here, B is here, C is here, and A is here. A, B, C, A. This is the PT graph here. All of you have got this? Any doubt in this, tell me. No doubt, understood. Yes, so graph conversion is very important. You must take care of this thing. This data, you must have to match with all the processes that you are following. Clear? Okay. So have you done reversible, irreversible process? Reversible and irreversible. Yes. So reversible, irreversible process, we'll discuss. We'll take a break now, okay? Because it will take uh, a bit of time to explain that too. Because after the break, we'll start this. Correct? So after the break, we'll start with reversible, irreversible process. We'll resume the session at 6.25. Okay? Take a break now. Yeah, guys, take a break. <laughs> 